going live, it says. And welcome to the Tesla Life number 208 on June 30th, 2021. So that was a bit of a false start. I think we had to do it <laughs> twice. So uh, still, still, still iron out those bumps. But uh, thanks very much for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, as uh, per usual, we have Mr. Patrick Connor joining us from the, I guess you would call that the hot coast today. <laughs> It's pretty hot today, here too. <laughs> today is an excellent day. Uh, my air conditioner finally turned off after running for four days straight. It was crazy here. There, it was hotter than Phoenix. There were places it was hotter than Saudi Arabia in parts. It was just nuts. The some of the roads buckled from heat expansion. Uh, I, I'm here in Oregon for those of you who, uh, and I hear we made national news, not no, uh, worldwide news with this crazy thing. Uh, some people were calling it a, a once in a millennium heat event and uh, it was definitely weird. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm glad it's over and I hope it never happens again. But uh, we've entered a stage of global weirding. So uh, there's gonna be strange, unexpected things. You, if you put a lot of energy into a system, it does unexpected things. That's just common sense. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> there you go. Especially well, since that, weather is heat yeah, powered. that's, that's got to be quite the uh, quite the change for you. Um, yes, certainly nowhere near those type of temperatures previously. So uh, right, yes. yeah, yeah. So now you we... don't you don't have to think about what it would be like to live in Death Valley. You just <laughs> you just lived it for three days. Yeah, so air conditioning here is, um, I guess, sixty to seventy percent of the homes have it. And, but even that we have it, but ours was undersized for this. Uh, ours is, you know, uh, uh, can cool you off on a nice 90 degree day, uh, but 115, it just can't keep up with that. That's not what it's sized for. And, and now it's moved north and it's hitting Seattle and they have about half the amount of uh, air conditioning. Uh, just, you don't need it in that region. And uh, so, yeah, they're, they're uh, in a bad spot. Now they're sweltering. Also joining us, and this is from the uh, this is from the hot, humid coast. We have Mr. <laughs> Casey Green joining us. How are you today, sir, from the D.C. area? Oh, I'm so... the air conditioner is trying to keep up. <laughs> it's about eighty in here right now. So, um... Yeah, that's amazing that we have both west and east coast. Uh, uh, I guess uh, getting roasted. Yeah, yeah. Like both sides are just sweltering um i'm kind of in the middle uh so i'm not getting as bad but uh yeah casey you're, you're kind of used to this though you get the hot oh, yeah. and humid weather often oh all the time i managed to uh injure my hand uh with a stunt for a video that i'm doing uh -oh. trying to be like franz <laughs> i thought it was because you were holding your name above <laughs> 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 Crushed his head. Yeah. <laughs> and since uh, we did, oh, I'm sorry, Casey. Um, uh, one thing. Since uh, since we are talking about air conditioning, I just want to give a shout out to everybody at the uh, utilities here in the on the West Coast. Our grid did not collapse. We didn't have massive outages and people sweating to death. Uh, so good job, everybody who uh, helped keep the power on, the AC running. Thank you very much. You didn't need them anyway. You got solar and power. Well. <laughs> Personally, I didn't. But yes, I still have some compassion for every. Okay. I can't. Everybody else can't fit in my house. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It'd be hot even with the AC. Yes. You find out how many how many fans or friends you really have, Patrick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so first in the chat were uh, uh, Hockey Day and Derek. They were here before we were here. Ah, very good. Good to see you, Hockey Day, Derek. Uh, well, let's get rolling. We got a number of news stories this week. Uh, first story we're going to touch upon is the uh, 4680 uh, battery pack, that uh, battery cell, 
that uh, Panasonic has chimed in and said that they are looking at reinvesting uh, to uh, put some of these 4680 lines in place. I'm going to assume that's going to be at uh, their main facility in Gigafactory, uh, Nevada. Uh, although, of course, they are shipping from uh, uh, Asia as well. So there is that possibility. But uh, it, uh, the new CEO of Panasonic made these comments that they do have a, a test uh, line up and running. And if results are as good as they hope they are, then they will look at uh, pushing this into a, a a production line as opposed to a test line. So uh, Elon had always said that um, they would get some of their suppliers involved uh, in the battery creation uh, for uh, the 4680. And uh, this is uh, certainly information uh, that relates to that. So it looks like uh, Panasonic is on board uh, with the manufacture of 4680 at some point, hopefully in the near future. Kind of interesting that everybody's just got pilots of this thing. Yeah, like like we don't we don't really know, right? Like there's a, there's all sorts of speculation as to the 4680 if it's if it's you know we last time that Elon spoke about it at the end of the um, end of the quarter uh, last quarter he had indicated that it's not quite there yet. So uh, we'll have to see if uh, this starts to uh, take take over at some point. If we start to get some actual production runs of this, and we can get some confirmation that's being put inside of Model Ys, most likely will be the first vehicle. Probably so. Now, has anyone else ever used this size can for anything else? Alkaline, dry cell, anything? Not that I'm aware of. No. I'm wondering if. People like Panasonic are going to do Tablus and some of the other things that were revealed at Battery Day. Because Tablus was certainly a, a big part of making sure that this size can could get cooled and could uh, not have uh, higher resistance. And I, I'm sure that there are many other ways to solve these problems. And Panasonic might be you know forging their own path or they might have borrowed some technology from Tesla as part of their partnership. It'll be interesting to see a teardown of the Panasonic 4680. For sure. What do you think, guys? Is there going to be a? Is, could there be a problem with Panasonic selling this to other customers? Could they do that? Would they? Would there be an arrangement that Tesla is only sharing their design with them to use for Tesla, or is it possible Probably. that Panasonic could use this elsewhere? I don't know. Like you said, there might not be a market for that size elsewhere. That too. Yeah. If it's not a common form factor, then no one's using it today. But, um, yeah. I, I wonder if some manufacturers would jump right into it because of the extra energy density and the uh, the savings uh, that are apparent uh, that were outlined in Battery Day. Yeah, I would think that you'd want to see them do tabless and pretty much everything except for the high nickel all at once to make the most use out of this on its very first outing. Yeah. Derek wishes well, you a uh, happy Canada Day but, tomorrow. Thank you very much. That uh, absolutely Canada Day is tomorrow, and uh, of course the Fourth uh, of July follows a few days later. So it will be the holiday weekend for you guys, and we get the uh, holiday Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with that, um, on to our next story, and uh, Casey's got a story about uh, our favorite uphill racetrack. Yes. Uh, our friend uh, Randy, oh, I, I had his name right the first time, and then I want to give this it up. Uh, <laughs> is it Randy Popes? I don't know how you I, say I, it exactly. I, I think, I think that's closer to what it, what it is. I had it this morning, <laughs> and then I lost it. Uh, <laughs> but Randy P was once again at Pike's Peak, and he didn't crash this time. Uh, Yay! He won the exhibition at 140 miles an hour on Pike's Peak with the Model S Plaid. And uh, he was tearing it up during practice as well. And I might have mentioned it here. I definitely mentioned it somewhere else that uh, I was glad that the siren sounded like a police car instead of that thing they had on the first Model S or Model 3 that they did with. Because that was, oof. this was tolerable. It was like a long police chase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, we posted one of this on our Twitter feed. Uh, that would be at the Tesla Life if you don't know about our Twitter feed. But we posted the entire uh, run. Um, it was short. The, uh, qualifying, <laughs> qualifying run. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, the siren played for the full run, and I was going, man, that's got to be annoying to the driver. I would yes. Think. <laughs> He, he said, he said, okay, he, do either of you know why, what the logistics for yes. that siren to play is? So if your car makes less than X decibels, then it needs to have a siren on it. Hybrid fuel cell, oh. even, even gas. If it doesn't make enough noise, it needs to have added noise so that they can hear you coming up the hill. Cause if they think it's in between runs and it's not, it could be a mess. Oh, you're on the okay, side of the mountain. So this, this is a, uh, this is a version of the pedestrian warning system then. But one that actually has a real cause. <laughs> and one that applies to all vehicles, regardless yes. of their fuel source. Right. So it yeah. As it should be. Yes. Other than the noise level, this is exactly what that should have been uh, mm -hmm. in public. Man, it was loud. I was going, like, is that in the car? Uh, so yeah. apparently, uh, inside, the mic picks it up really well. But uh, that's, uh, that's a lot of noise. And of course... The car is completely stripped. This Model S Plaid, uh, once no they insulation. received it, they just stripped <laughs> everything out of it that uh, wasn't bolted down and wasn't needed. And uh, you're right, there's not a there's not an inch of noise cancellation left in the car because it takes up weight. So it does. all of it was removed. Their very first year doing this, they said they were going to try and do something to uh, uh, mitigate it inside the car. And I guess, obviously, like you said, there's nothing to stop it. So they changed the tone to one that was less. Uh, nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, congratulations to uh, Randy. Um, it looks like the the plaid certainly was dominated its uh, its particular class. So uh, good to see. Yeah. Oh, Hockey Day says they forgot to turn it on a few times. I hope that didn't cost them too much. Ah. Well, that that could get expensive. They Assuming that nobody gets hurt. Yeah. They charge yeah. them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I couldn't help myself, you asked if anybody else is using the 4680 format and uh, a little Googling, and I found that there is uh, a Chinese battery fan, ma Chinese battery manufacturer, uh, CBAK Energy, that is making them, and they are making them for uh, Jack Motors, JAC Motors, which is 75% uh, owned by Volkswagen, mm -hmm. and it's a Chinese car company, EV company. So uh, the there you go. There are some uh, people, other other companies using this form factor, what? that had nothing to do with Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Did you say when they were starting? Uh, this article is from January of this year. Oh, okay. Um, so this might be a new format then. Yeah, this is probably for a, a new vehicle that is in development. Not like the old single A battery or something that <laughs> they've <Right>. re resuscitated. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, moving on, uh, Patrick's got a story about uh, EV sales. Ooh, yeah. That is right. So this article is coming to us from uh, Drive Tesla Canada, and it says Tesla outselling all other EVs combined in the U.S. by a three-to-one margin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so... Uh, the uh, the market has uh, decided the best EV is a Tesla. Uh, I wonder maybe people should write uh, articles about them and and uh, do podcasts about them and uh, have YouTube channels dedicated to them. This is going to be big. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, EVs are that? gaining. So it starts out here with the, the two sentences I want to read and then talk about because I don't. Uh, this doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, EVs are gaining in popularity in the United States. Great. Uh, the latest data shows Americans registered three times as many new EVs in the first quarter of 2021 when compared to internal combustion engine vehicles. Uh, there's no way there were three times as many EVs. Am I reading that wrong? Uh, maybe it's yeah, grown three times. Be. Compared yeah. to previous quarters, that's, relative yeah, to that's got to be incorrect. There's no yeah. If seventy five percent of the vehicles sold yeah. were EVs, uh, that would be uh, a whole different world. That would be a different uh, a different headline for sure. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so then they go on to actually have some of the uh, what's what's the the best selling Tesla? It's the Model Y uh, with Model Three coming in after that and then a far distant third is the chevy bolt 
uh, and then the rest of the the Maki, the Leaf, the Etron taking up the uh, the remainder of the list here. Uh, so uh, even Model S and Model X, they were not in production in Q1, but they still got a few sales out there from things they had in inventory. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see those shoot up the list because today is the end of Q2. It so is. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you had a that Tesla that, that you were getting delivered this quarter, you probably got it yesterday or today. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine is being strong armed to try and pick his car up tomorrow or today, rather. No, today, it, it yeah. Was, it yeah, was tomorrow, yeah, yesterday. The, tomorrow's too late. Yeah. <laughs> it was tomorrow, right. yesterday. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, yesterday's tomorrow's today. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, they'll be, they'll they'll be open to midnight tonight for sure. Oh, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm trying I'm to pull these cars out. And get the date of the 30th of June on those invoices. Exactly. I'm curious where they managed to find 3,300 uh, large bodies. Hmm. For them being out of construction for six months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where Where are they finding the extras? You think there'd be only stragglers left at this point? Not that many. I mean, I might, I might say maybe 100 or 200, but wow. Yeah. Interesting. So, uh, well, uh, Three to one uh, EV sales uh, certainly is is good news. Um, we've talked about this previously. Oh, good point, Tesla Hockaday. There were there were F one fifties. We've heard around. about that when it came to um, incentives. Uh, we've heard about that in different countries. Uh, it just it is the case. Uh, uh, Tesla is king of the heap now and continues to be that way for. Uh, the EV class. Um, so mm -hmm. we're, we're wondering if uh, over time some of these others are going to start to eat into that. But uh, at this point, you know, 75% of the cars being sold are basically Tesla. So Th that, that uh, can't be right because the incentive in the US has expired and Tesla sales are going to drop like a rock. Well, I heard that on some Tesla yeah, Q yeah. page that, that's <laughs> it for sure. <laughs> yeah, they were supposed to drop off the cliff some time ago, um, right. and yet uh, yeah. we're even hearing information now that uh, quarter three is basically sold out of uh, threes and, and Ys. Um, wow. So before the quarter even officially begins, there's going to be trouble getting a Y uh, if you're after one, because uh, they've been uh, being... Uh, sold ahead of time uh throughout the end of quarter two so i had a friend that uh, just basically picked up a, a y a few weeks ago and uh, he was being told the same thing that uh, they're really not sure on deliveries uh, because of the amount of demand for the car so things are certainly looking bright uh, for tesla and sales of the model y it uh, it just is a it's now a uh, skyrocket uh, when it comes to sales. It, it just selling like hotcakes. Right. Yeah. Other vehicles have uh, you know like 100 days sitting on the lot before they can be sold. Tesla's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. 100 days backlog. You better order exactly. now. <laughs> exactly. Which is not a great thing either. But uh, I guess it's it's better than the other. But um, yeah. <laughs> uh, certainly, uh, certainly, we'd like to see them be able to kick up production. I know there's a number of. Uh, uh, supplier issues uh, still out there, and that's still hindering Tesla's ability to open things up. But we got a story about that uh, when we get uh, close to the end of the show. Yeah, my friend with the plaid, they, they told him if he doesn't get it to, to today, that it'd probably be September before he gets his car. Mm. So I'm hoping that was just tough to, sales tactics. Was that enough to push him over the edge, Casey? They gave him his VIN number on Saturday and then expected mm. him to have his loan and insurance ready to go by lunchtime on Monday. That doesn't really work that way unless you have Tesla as a bank and insurance company. <laughs> yeah. yeah, most banks are closed on the weekends, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, uh, next story, uh, and this is something we've talked about several times in the past. Tesla is going to be opening some superchargers to other EVs. And this is going to be happening uh, in uh, Norway and Sweden. So this article mm -hmm. from Tesla Rati, uh, talks about how Tesla is now indicating that sometime mid-2022, uh, they're going to start allowing the superchargers in Norway and Sweden. I don't know if it's selected ones or just a, is it going to be all of them or some of them, uh, but uh, they're going to be starting to open those superchargers up to other people. Now, of course, Europe 
a number of their chargers actually have the the CCS charger on the Tesla uh, terminals or the yeah their V three the, systems. Uh, stalls. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's going to be a lot easier for them to do it because they've got the option of both handles, both the uh, Tesla and uh, the CCS handle uh, that are in those superchargers already. So basically, you've got two handles on every supercharger. Yep. So At the very uh, least. this is going to be easier for them. Uh, how it's going to happen, uh, we heard about this in the past. We talked about uh, possibly everyone getting the Tesla app, setting up your own account with your credit card. And then you could have that, uh, hopefully, that um, that ability just to plug in and it gets charged to your account. Um, but uh, that has yet to be told as to how it's going to operate. Again, we're talking mid-2022, so they've got some time to figure it out, about a year. Uh, but um, we'll have to see if uh, some more details come to light over this and uh, if uh, the possibility of this moving to other countries uh, will uh, be mentioned at all by Tesla. Yeah, and it, ha- it would have to be a car that supports the plug and charge protocol, so they know which one to to who's plugged in. And right, uh, right now, that's the Mach E and the ID four. I think are the only two that I know of. I mean, there might there might be others, but uh, and certainly by twenty twenty two, there will be more. But if it if you have a Leaf today that doesn't or, or a Bolt or whatever, uh, you might not be able to to even when Tesla says it's open to all. They mean all that have this feature, not everybody. Asterisk, all compatible. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, because we so, heard the German minister talk about uh, his, forcing them. <laughs> uh, hope that Tesla would open up their chargers as well uh, in Germany. But again, it wasn't mentioned for Germany, strictly for Norway and Sweden at this point. Although Germany was the one that showed us it could be done when we saw that uh, accidental. Right. Uh, free supercharging for everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, come, come um, as you are. Pick up a yeah. charge. <laughs> I yeah, and we'll you see. can do that when it's free. You don't care who you're billing because there's no <laughs> billing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I suspect what we'll see is uh, if they don't open it to everybody in Norway and Sweden, it'll be to the stations that they accept the government money from to uh, to to build out the stations. As uh, that's a requirement of said government money is that uh, it needs to be public. And that right. makes sense if the government's paying the bill. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally does. Hey, uh, yeah, here's some money. You you, you can have it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna want we're gonna want a favor after. So hey, know, we're customers now. Do this. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, that'd be like if the um, uh, Charge America was only for VWs. <laughs> that would not have. Yeah, <laughs> this is your punishment. <laughs> yeah, that's not a punishment. That's yeah. <laughs> It's barely a punishment now. That would make it like super easy. <laughs> uh, well, with that, uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, batteries. Uh, Patrick's got a story about uh, the power wall and what's going on. That is right. This is coming to us from Tesmanian. Uh, Tesla Powerwall 3 should hit market in spring 22 with improved efficiency, storage capacity, and a lower cost. So uh, what more could you want? It's got it all. <laughs> you get more for less and uh, coming soon. So uh, as we know, uh, Tesla has recently updated the Powerwall 2 to the Powerwall 2 Plus. And um, now they're going to uh, go even further and have the Powerwall 3, which uh, makes sense. The Powerwall 2 has been out for how long now? Six or seven years? It's been, it's been a while. Um, the, the Powerwall one, they did not ship many of those at all. No, uh, those were uh, DC coupled and had uh, other problems. Powerwall two has been the the bulk of what they've delivered, and um, Powerwall three is going to be coming soon. The cool thing about this is so so Tesla has been using NMC batteries in these, which are um, great um, energy density. And that's important for a mobile device. But if it's stationary, the the weight is not as important. And so you could use iron-based solutions that that, uh, actually are are more resilient to heat and other things. Uh, They're heavier, but that's okay. It's not going anywhere. So uh, for that that might be one way that Powerwall 3 is going to be uh, cheaper. 
and have higher capacity, you can't do that and, and have the same expensive cells. You have to find a, another way to, to get there. So um, they're working with Panasonic on NMC today. They're, um, uh, no, let me, let me rephrase that. The, the, one of the lines here is Tesla is currently working with Panasonic to manufacture nickel cobalt aluminum batteries at the Gigafactory in Nevada, and they're buying NMC batteries from LG Chem in China. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, Tesla has said multiple times, if you're making batteries, we want to buy some. Uh, uh, talk to them. So uh, the, they're um, looking at all these various chemistries. What are the price points? What are the capabilities? And what products can they put them into? Because if they can free up the Powerwall um, batteries now, then that those are perfectly made for vehicles. So those can go right into vehicles and they can put more affordable batteries into the power walls and get those a better price. So that that's that's a win-win for Tesla and for the customers. Uh, since we know they have a big backlog, we just talked about it. So uh, this will be exciting. Around, I wonder if the 4680 will play into these plans since it is hmm. mid, uh, spring of 2022. Maybe. Didn't they um, start shipping power walls to China? Yes. Yeah, that happened last week. Uh, that um, yeah, power. They had their first big uh, um, delivery power on event in China. Powerwall twos are now uh, are are now in country there. I don't know if it's going to be forty six eighty. They're um, uh, those are going to have a, a very special purpose, right? So there's no reason it w th those lines are still ramping. I think those are going to be dedicated to their vehicles. Yeah. They could even be prismatic. I mean, it's not like they go anywhere. Here's a question. Maybe, maybe <laughs> you or Casey know um, what uh, would the battery cells be in Powerwall two? Powerwall two or twenty one seventies mostly. Yes. Okay. That's my understanding. They're built right at the Gigafactory, uh, Nevada. Mm -hmm. I should say the only ones running right now, other than um, Buffalo. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Well. Uh... Good to see, like, uh, there was a, a big improvement from Powerwall 1 to Powerwall 2. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, with it being cheaper, more efficient, more storage, uh, that's going to be a, another plus for Powerwall 3. So um, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if the uh, if the 13.5 uh, kilowatts go up uh, and if the price comes down. But that's what they're saying in this report. So hopefully, we'll yeah. have to keep an eye on it. It'll be interesting to see if they stay as AC-connected batteries. Um because uh, now that Tesla makes their own inverter, maybe they uh, go DC. Go back, DC. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, and and, be and because they're only selling the uh, power walls with Tesla Solar, they can do that. Yes. The, the real advantage of having an AC connection is uh, compatibility. Um, AC is just you know what that's what your house runs on. So uh, you, you, it can work with any inverter. It can work with any retrofit. Um, but if it's Tesla solar sale sales only then maybe maybe it will be dc we'll find out hmm. that would make sense when you have less round tripping yeah well, it's it's more efficient but you, you lose some compatibility but if you're just selling it in that this is what we sell it for then you don't need that compatibility yeah hopefully they then also allow uh, more off-grid installations without going for power pack because i think it'd be kind of cool to find a plot and then just move in <laughs> Don't connect to anything. Starlink for internet, groundwater, septic, <laughs> no HOAs. <laughs> you and Joe Ordia would be good friends. <laughs> Have you? He's got a YouTube channel where he's off off grid living and uh, off the yeah, grid. he's yeah. he's yeah he's I, I love his stuff. Well, um, next story, uh, Casey, are you going to handle this one? Probably. Which one was it? All right. So this was. Uh, oh yeah, that uh, one. <laughs> Supercharger, um, Tesla owner suing Tesla. Owner supercharger <laughs> Is that you, Casey? It's not me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, some guy, uh, Kevin Shankerman, uh, alleges that Tesla is robbing him blind. Um, he decided that he wanted to park at a supercharger and then not move his car. And then Tesla assessed him an idle fee. Repeatedly. As they should. As they promised. My 2016 was subject to them, and my 2018 came with it in the paperwork. Uh, 
And um, so then after a while, Tesla cut him off because he had a large unpaid service bill because the service mm -hmm. is how they handle your credit card for that thing. And I'm sure at this point, if he were to pay his bill, they would turn his supercharging back on. But, Probably. Uh, but I thought it went directly to your credit card and that you couldn't charge if you didn't have a card on file. Uh, if you don't have a card on file, uh, the way they had worded it in the past, uh, if something happened to your card or if you didn't have one yet, it would it would kind of build up a small balance. And then okay. they so, would want you to clear that balance really quickly. Yeah, so he, he's saying my car has supercharging for life and Correct. therefore you shouldn't charge me idle free, fees. Free supercharging for life. Yes, free supercharging for life. Yeah, so I have that in my 2016 as well. Mm -hmm. And um, supercharging is not the same as parking, parking. and blocking a spot. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, so they didn't charge me, they didn't promise me free parking for life in Correct. any Tesla stall. That's not what the deal was. And hey, you're just being York. a jerk if you <laughs> exactly. sit there after it's already full. That there's limited capacity. Can you imagine if you went to a gas station and somebody was like, "Oh no, I'm I'm down there doing my laundry at the laundromat, or I'm watching a movie, <laughs> or I'm shopping, but I just leave my car right here because I, I might need some gas eventually." <laughs> and uh, don't worry, four hours better, from they, now they, I'll they be back. They did get gas three hours ago. The the hose is still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about being a hoser. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy's a jerk. And uh, I, I hope Tesla can sues him for stupidity, and they win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you, like you, like you guys mentioned, it's it's a difference between I have unlimited supercharging for life, other than I am able to block a space for life. Uh, right, it's what, not free parking. The argument <laughs> is so, uh, and, and the guy, you know, I'm thinking that uh, this guy is just a little bit overprivileged uh, because uh, mm. he's got this sweet deal. Uh, that uh, he enjoys, and he can't be smart enough to move his vehicle once it's full and it cannot take any more charge. Uh, that's yep. there's no excuse for that, uh, because now he's blocking it from others. I've got yeah. three personal examples for him. Uh, there, I know there's more out there, like that one in New York that we talked about a while ago. That uh, the guy was assessed a ten thousand dollar parking fee, but that's that's uh, so personally. If you stay too long at Savannah Airport, like more than two hours. You have to pay to park. If you park for any amount of time at National Harbor or Arlington Superchargers, any amount of time, you must pay uh, from zero to 30 minutes. That means they don't want you to even breeze through and find out there's no spaces and leave. You got to pay just to see that there were no spaces available, which is. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I, give me give me 10 free minutes so I can see that there were no spaces before I leave. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so this guy, yeah, I. I I hope that uh, this is dismissed quickly. Uh, if even if this is serious, like I, I don't see how anyone reasonable could charge this uh, for Tesla, could bring this in a suit. I just think it's it's frivolous and it's a waste of time. And it's yeah. inconsiderate. Right, and so our community is growing, and there are going to be plenty of entitled people. I mean, we we saw it with. Uh, I can sit in the back seat and. Uh, let the car drive and you can't tell me not to uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately I, uh, I would I would like to just take driver's license away from these people altogether not just their cars <laughs> yeah you don't deserve this <laughs> you don't deserve it at all is right yeah yeah, yeah. so It'd be funny is if that car has uh, FSD and then at some point the robot chargers come in and and he would restore himself and he would try this move and then the car would just move out of the spot <laughs> Yes, Move that away. would be awesome. Yeah. That that's what, that's what we need to get to is where uh, the cars can have snaky snake plug in and then done, and then it moves over, and the next car that was sitting there in a parking spot while their owner is off doing whatever the, will just come in and do the same, and that'll be it's like a valet service, automatic valet service. Yeah, you're Mister Entitled. Uh, it seems that there seems to always happen to be a. Uh... Uh, a blockage to your car every time it supercharges. We're going to have to turn it off again. <laughs> like if it's like a, a cardboard cutout or a cinder block. <laughs> I wonder what kind of car he had previously. What, what Which owners are the most entitled? <laughs> question. Well, that, that could what be is, a What is his day job to have such a pedantic of. argument? <laughs> it's also wrong. <laughs> 
Uh, Put up a lot full sign. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Move on to our next story. Before we upset BMW drivers, let's move on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I saw one using blinkers the other day. What? <laughs> yeah. This, of course, is an artist's rendering of the model next. Or nice. The uh, that name's out. Shall be not be named. Thousand dollar US car. <laughs> Uh, this article, obviously from Inside EVs, uh, where they were talking about uh, a article written by Autocar. And this magazine, uh, or online publication Autocar, had indicated that they believe, uh, through information they have received, uh, which, you know, they haven't named any sources, uh, but uh, they have heard that uh, some more information about the $25,000 Tesla will be forthcoming by mid 2022 so uh they uh, that's that's only a year from now um when was battery days guys well, that was um was that September year now. or august of last year <laughs> it was about a year ago about a year ago okay. yeah in this covid world i've lost all track of time yeah, perception yeah, don't ask same. me it's all the same. <laughs> But uh, that was announced at Battery Day about the 25,000 car being about three years away. So um, rough numbers, that would put it next year at this time, that would put it at roughly, I guess that would be a year uh, from the date uh, quoted during Battery Day. I think so, it would be late. <laughs> well, we still haven't mm -hmm. seen it. We haven't seen a design. We haven't seen any information about it at all. Um, so obviously Tesla's got a number of things in the fire right now that they've got to get going. Uh, yes, they two do. Factories, you know, up and running production at those two factories. The Cybertruck, uh, which uh, people are wondering about, uh, and there's large amount of orders. So if we say a semi year from today, roadster, yeah, if we say it's a year from today, hopefully they've got some of those things at least ironed out that they're starting to roll production is moving things are a little bit better of a state and then they can get involved with talking about another vehicle so it is possible that we may hear some information by a year from now on that twenty five thousand dollar car so the right. question is did um tesla design china open yet and if they have how fast do they work in relation to tesla design fremont or not Fremont, uh, Palo Alto, wherever SpaceX is. That's um, Hawthorne. Hawthorne, yes. Yeah, the Hawthorne Design Center, yes. So yeah. <laughs> how, well, how fast do they did, work compared to that? Also, we did also hear that uh, there is going to be another smaller price car uh, oh. from Germany, right? It yes. Be the talk of the Germans having their own hot hatch or something along that line. He pits three more divisions against each other. Uh, Hawthorne versus Germany versus China. Come up with a cheap car. Go. I, I wonder if, I wonder if <laughs> Hawthorne's even looking at it or if they will just take on well, the Chinese or the uh, or the uh, German car. Yeah, design them as world cars. I really like the idea of it being a hot hatch. That's, um, uh, you know, we have no idea what it's going to be, uh, but that that's a cool idea. And it makes sense. <laughs> They're saying call it the Tesla Q. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> ah, a cute little car the tesla q it's perfect yeah. <laughs> I, I i certainly hope it has a hatchback because as we saw with the model 3 um a lot of tesla owners and enthusiasts are um used to the utility of of a hatchback and yes with the styling on the model 3 everyone was uh surprised that it wasn't i know some people prefer sedan so they were happy with it but uh, a lot of people end up have ended up switching their model threes for model y's just to get the hatchback correct yeah get the hatchback yep. back <laughs> <laughs> yep and yeah, uh, and, and, yeah we see and of course this that that's going to be a game changer car though like we thought the model three was transformative to the automobile industry but having a car that's now dropped to 25,000 base US, that opens up a brand new amount of customers uh, that can afford that car. So, Especially uh, if any of the credits come back. Disruption further uh, into some of these other automakers that uh, have been slow uh, yeah. to get their electrified programs uh, in gear. 
I, I also figured. suspect it won't be a, a penalty box, not 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 just because it's a Tesla, but because I, I think the way they're going to get there is using the uh, the heavy version of the 4680s, so uh, iron, uh, the mm-hmm. iron cells, and mm-hmm. uh, in volume. So I, I can see something that's like only slightly smaller than the Model Three, or well, the Model Three is still technically a full size car in it. So yeah. something that is actually the size of a Civic rather than just looking like one from the rear. And and uh, or maybe even a, a Honda Fit, and then putting in the batteries, and I could see that easily being the, the price same, and still being fully luxury the or same type premium. Of analogy or or um, uh, ratio uh, that was done from the S to the three was of course about twenty percent. Yeah, so they could uh, do the same thing again. Twenty percent. Could yeah. it be the three is this becomes twenty percent smaller than the three? So with a hatch. We don't know. All <laughs> yeah. speculation. All speculation. Yeah, is, it totally is. But, and okay. there are just parts of the world where they have narrow roads, and so people are still going to want a smaller car, but they're going to want to. They're going to buy the luxury upgrades in inside, because uh, they want smaller for parking and for maneuvering and roads. But they still want a great EV, and uh, yeah, this is going to yeah, be awesome. And, and as we've seen with them so far, if you put the same interior in every car, you can plan for that. Mm-hmm. Just turn it all off in software, and and. Don't do like BMW. Do like Tesla, where you pay and it's on. Don't don't rent the heated steering wheel for a season. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. It Absolutely is. horrible. Uh, I don't know. Tesla's getting good subscriptions. They could do that, and if that's I don't what people renting want, FSD because that's super expensive. But I mean, how expensive <laughs> is a heated seat that you need to rent it? By the time you're done renting it, you'll have paid it over four times. Yes, I will have definitely. to protest openly if that becomes the case with that. <laughs> Canadian <laughs> revolt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Next, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a, little, a bit of an experiment happening in California. Tesla announced recently uh, that they're going to uh, provide uh, select free supercharging in California during the fourth long weekend. So, this select. upcoming weekend, a number of different uh, locations in California that Tesla has mapped out. And it's, it looks like they're the ones that are between cities. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to be offering free supercharging during certain points of the day and the evening. So they're looking to off put the, the um, I guess, the demand uh, for mm-hmm. supercharging at times that they believe they know there will be busy and push it off to these other hours where you will get your charge for free. So uh, this is looks like a bit of an experiment. We've seen a number of different things that happened, especially in California, over the past holiday seasons. And this looks like it's an extension of that, uh, where they're trying to see what formula works best for them. Um, it's an extensive but, uh, list. And a lot of them a, have it, battery backing. Yep. But uh, it would be uh, interesting to see what those lineups are going to look like this holiday weekend, of course, as people start to get back to regular routines and driving further uh, to see family and friends uh, over the holiday long weekends. Uh, We'll have to see if there are lineups or if this new measure is going to help Tesla with the volume of traffic that uh, head to those superchargers uh, on those longer trips. Yeah, load balancing is a smart move. It looks like it's designed to manage their crowds. Uh, especially since these most of these are larger ones, mm-hmm. and like you said, in between cities, I think it's designed to help people not crowd the stations. <laughs> right? Yeah. If you yeah. do this at the less popular stations, that's going to attract more drivers there. You do it at the off hours, that'll uh, have them not charging when everyone else is charging. Like, oh, let's go an hour early, and we can stop and, and get some free juice uh, before. Why not? Right. And if they have batteries, yeah. then they can shave whatever peak gain there may be. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if they it's... all have batteries, but a lot of these stations listed have batteries. Yeah. I don't know if it's just the volume of cars they're trying to balance or energy or both. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. It's got to be number of vehicles based on, you know, the holiday rush. So it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's got to be the volume of vehicles as opposed to, but of course, that does roll into, you know, uh, shaving off. Uh, Energies. If they push it to off hours where there there may be an incentive uh, from the utility from having uh, charging happen at a later or earlier time uh, instead of prime time, that, that may fall into it as well, certainly. Mm-hmm. With that said, uh, Case is going to take us into the world of TikTok. 
Yeah, <laughs> this gonna... wonderful person called Rico. Yes, our, our friend Suave? Rico here. Rico, yeah, um, <laughs> Rico Kim Broro. Uh, <laughs> uh, he had a video that he shared where, uh, hang on a second, it'll be easier. So he hasn't taken it down. See your audio. I'm not sure we want to give him a view. <laughs> yeah, good point. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Tesla, this is unacceptable. I just received my new Tesla, and literally my airbag is just hanging out like this. It's not even connected to my steering wheel, and it's literally supposed to be like, what is going on, Tesla? We just got the car. That was a lie. <laughs> that was a lie. <laughs> that was, I'd say something else like the meme, but, uh, well, I try to keep it kid friendly. Uh, <laughs> That was an effing lie. And uh, uh, that vehicle, as you saw, was in transport mode. I don't know how he had his lunch in there. Um, so one of the items done, done during PDI would be to inspect the tabs on that airbag, make sure it's in there correctly. And since the vehicle was still in transport mode, it hadn't even been to service mode to get its PDI, uh, which is pre-delivery inspection on new cars. Uh, as a former car salesperson, very familiar with the process. And uh, so, dude has apologized, and so he doesn't own a Tesla. That was Correct. not his Tesla. Correct. Uh, that was yeah. So I was just going into the details of the, what the lie was. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as you see, it's in transport mode, and uh, we don't know how he got into the car. And uh, oh yeah, you can see that red screen up there. Now is that uh, this was at the Tesla delivery center, yes. and this car was around the side and it was unlocked. So he yep. just got in it. With his lunch. Uh, he's persona yeah, non grata. It looked like it was his, right? R right, yeah. So he's persona non grata, and the, the police uh, actually paid him a visit, uh, or at least a phone call, and that's what prompted his apology. <laughs> oh. But here's the funny thing is he actually did a full apology uh, yes. through TikTok. He posted that. But yet, Casey, you can still find the video where he slams Tesla for not fixing his car properly after purchasing it. From what so I understand how, of the TikTok life, is you, you, it's all about them hits, baby. Yeah, so, right. so how sorry is the guy really? If, Not sorry uh, enough. He apologizes, <laughs> but yet keeps up the, the FUD video that he placed uh, in the first place. Yeah. And doesn't like do a link in it. I don't know if you can do links in, it, in, in, in TikTok or not, because I'm not allowed to participate in them. Do my, uh, I do their affiliation with the Chinese government. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 just wrong. Like I, it is I totally right. wrong. He should have taken guy. it down or covered it or something. Yeah, a real apology would have taken down the video instead of leaving it up there for yet more people to see it and uh, further slander Tesla's reputation or uh, with with this lie. Yeah, it's just further not... push the fud out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this guy, uh, he's got no credibility in my books, like uh, apologizing openly uh, on a TikTok video and claiming that he really loves the company and he has a Model 3 on order. And mm -hmm. uh, so sorry, Elon. Man, if I was Elon, I'd look up his number and say, put it to the back of the list. You know what, though? He's not getting his car for another three quarters. If he's monetized, maybe this is how he's paying for his Model 3 because of the residual hits. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still, uh, like you said, it's, it's morally bankrupt. But yes. uh, I think even the Chinese folks who were lying about the brakes took their original videos and posts down and, and did their sincere apologies. Although Tesla Legal kind of gave them a little well, shove. Yeah, made them, <laughs> pushed them to the edge for sure. Yes. Um, Erwin is asking about the, uh, the coolant in the heat pumps of the Model S Plaid. Uh, we don't know if they are CO2, but we do know that they are uh, much more... Uh, capacious than the ones in the existing legacy cars uh, model, or actually called large bodies. They're not legacy anymore. They've been redesigned <laughs> than the existing large bodies. You said yeah, and that's one reason it can do, uh, you know, uh, round after lives. round without yeah. getting winded is because they've yeah. improved the cooling significantly. Yeah. Well, with that, uh, on to our next story. Patrick's got uh, some news about someone anticipating Q2 sales. That is right. So uh, the street estimate 
for Q2, like we said earlier, today is the last day of Q2, is about 200. What's that? I said it sure be. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, uh, so um, it's about 200,000 vehicles. Well, RBC Capital has come out with their estimate, and they say it's 195 vehicles and that the streets is too high. Um, which oh yeah oh sorry yeah did i 195,000 <laughs> really yes yes yeah the thousand yes yes you're right and uh so um which is still in the ballpark i mean the street numbers are uh a, a consensus estimate you could put 195,000 in there with the others and still that's not going to change much of the the uh consensus uh, estimate so uh, last quarter, I just went and looked, and Tesla delivered 180,000, or more specifically, uh, 184,800 vehicles. So even if they only deliver 195,000, that would still be a record quarter, because last quarter was a record quarter. Yep. And uh, uh, so they're a growing company quarter after quarter, record after record. Um, will they get to a million this year? Well, the year is half over and they're at uh, a little less than 400,000, depending on what they do for this quarter. We don't know yet for sure. And uh, so that's going to be about 600,000 in the second half. That's a tall order, uh, but it'll, it's, uh, it's uh, a great goal. Uh, a million more EVs on the road this year. The, is uh, even if it's only nine hundred thousand more, that's great. If they make a million, that's you know we're, uh, a year we're celebrating, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this uh, plays out. And if um, I'm, I'm not sure why uh, RBC is uh, making a, a big deal out of their estimate, um, that they're saying that they're basing this off of some uh, data they've collected from China and other uh, other other methods they have in uh, for collecting their data. This is so do, you guys know, do you guys know that it's gotten to the point where people are watching Tesla so closely that in Fremont, across the street from the factory, there are actually cameras on other buildings with zoom lenses pointing at Fremont and the exit bays uh, for vehicles. And yeah, just counting the number that, of cars to come out, they they pay yeah. some interns to tally. <laughs> yeah, Elon mentioned that with uh, with uh, Starship. Somebody asked him in a presentation yesterday. They said, uh, "So, what do you think of the Starship?" He says, "Well, if I want to find out what's going on, I just pull up YouTube." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I've got so many zoom lenses pointed at my vehicle." <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need to, to film anything. That's, yes. funny. Uh, that's just crazy. I, and and like you said, Patrick, what's the difference really between one hundred ninety five and two hundred thousand? Like. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. It's, it's, it's so record, annoying. It's going to be a record quarter, anyways. Yes. Uh, so an extra five thousand cars, it's certainly not going to make or break them. Uh, yeah. but, right. Uh, it it's 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 still Tesla is on this trajectory. It's still moving up and up and up, multiple quarters at a time. So right, I don't that's the important with... part of that message is uh, not five thousand cars this quarter, next quarter. That is so small minded thinking. Um, that's, that, the, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 not about. Uh, I mean, if if you do or don't get your car, that you know, very personal yeah, matters to yeah. you. <laughs> Certainly, if you're one of those five thousand that that doesn't get it, but uh, yeah, the, the 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 bigger picture. Where are we at for the whole year? Where are we at next year? Where are we at five years, ten years from now? And you're right, Mark. The trajectory is up, and that's what that's what matters. But what's even even more annoying than all of that is is this quarter to quarter mindset is that. So what if they do 186,000 this quarter instead of 195,000? So now what's going to mm -hmm. happen is if they do 186,000, they're going to get trashed in the market for something they didn't even say. Or uh, I, right. I think Tesla should sell less than what the street is expected because maybe the stock will go up. Because every time they're over <laughs> what the street expects, they lose on the stock. So That's what I was trying to say next. Is they sell 201,000 and it's <laughs> yeah. going to be trashed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Should try an experiment. Yeah. But uh, that's, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting now at the end of the quarter. And of course, uh, if the news is good, uh, Tesla usually reports on this in a few days after the quarter. So we'll be keeping our eye on that. Uh, obviously, we believe it's going to be a higher number. I believe oh, yeah. it's going to be another record. Uh, but uh, that's, you know, that's just guesswork at this point. But it looks pretty, 
pretty safe to to believe that that would be the case. But yeah, I miss the for sure shortly. I miss the early days of Tesla investing when uh, they were not profitable. And yeah. then uh, s- someone would, at this shareholder meeting would say, when are you going to start focusing on profitability? And and Musk would say something like, if that's your goal, you should invest in another company because they were investing in growth. Yeah. And uh, they, they, yeah, exactly. They needed to build out the supercharger network. And that's why three quarters of the EVs being sold today are Teslas because they have uh, they they can deliver them because they have the factories. They have the battery supply because they built a gigafactory. And yes, they partnered with Panasonic, but they have Panasonic in their building. So there's no question about where those cells are going when they get manufactured. They don't have to have some, oh, no, well, we had a contract with you, but another e- uh, company came in and offered us 10% more. So we're giving them to them instead. T- Tesla invested in all the right things to make this happen, whereas every other manufacturer's kind of done compliance cars and, uh, well, we'll try a few. We'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe not. There's a difference between being all in or dabbling, and this is exactly where that pays off. Yeah, yeah and we've seen year and year again that quarter three and quarter four just managed to make quarter one and quarter two look like child's play. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Well, you we'll get to see, see that, that exponential uh, curve every year over and over. <laughs> see if that trend continues, and we'll learn about that shortly. If you're following us, please follow us on the on the Twitter feed, the Tesla Life, uh, as well as our Facebook, uh, the Tesla Life Number One. Uh, thanks, Patrick, for organizing that, and uh, thank you, Casey, for organizing our live feed. Uh, with that, final story goes to Patrick, and it's about F F F. Radio. How is that about? <laughs> That's right. So, uh, regular listeners, viewers of the show will know that a future free from fossil fuels is one of my favorite expressions. And um, it seems to be catching on. So, there is now a uh, future, uh, a radio fossil freedom show that you can listen to on Spotify. And this was started by a charging company where they at their uh, charging stations are putting out this uh, low watt uh, radio program so that if you're plugged in, you can tune in and listen to a future that is free from fossil fuels. And this radio program is being beamed back in time. So you can hear what the future will be like. What kinds of things are they talking about when they don't have to worry about emissions or uh, um, the, the, a cargo ship stuck in the Suez Canal that, that's causing <laughs> fuel prices to, to go through the roof, or uh, uh, people dying early from uh, PM 2.5. And uh, so so uh, it's just, it, it paints a picture of how the future can be, and uh, just the fact that it was a future free from fossil fuels, of course, grabbed my attention, and I thought it would be cool to talk about it. Exactly. I thought for sure you are saying you're their first guest. I thought for sure you were going to announce that today. We're no, but yes. We're going to have to send him a note and say, hey, you're using Patrick's slogan. He should be yeah. on the show. Yeah, sure. TM. Uh, yeah, I've got that <laughs> registered. And uh, I don't want royalties. I just want to come on and talk about how awesome this future is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's in well, with, with that, we'll roll into the credits. Mr. Green, anything to share with us for this upcoming week? Well, I injured myself for the show for you. Yeah, holding so, holding his 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 letter, his sign. <laughs> uh, so uh, this blurry item behind me is, is part of it. And uh, take a look at uh, youtubecom slash Green in a few hours, and I'll have that up there for you to look at. It may be early tomorrow, but I want to try and get it up for uh, what drives this comes on. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I put a lot of time into it. It was fun, and I hope you enjoy it. Very good. Mr. Connor, any parting words for us today? Yes, um, I am with the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association. You can find us at oeva.org. And I blog at carswithcords.net. And uh, with all this heat, I've, of course, been uh, talking about how uh, our uh, solar has been producing. And uh, as some of you may know, with uh, when it gets uh, above 25C, that um, solar panels have uh, some degradation that occurs. And uh, it's funny that they they like the sun, but they don't like the heat. But it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be at at all, actually. Um, 
and and you can read all about what what I assumed and how I was wrong and what the actual data is, um, and maybe you'll learn something there too. Uh, check it out, carswithgorge.net. Well, I mean, they, they did build a black or purple structure. They, they hopefully know what they're doing with the heat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And if you're still with us at this point, please help us out by pressing that like button. Give us a thumbs up on the video. That helps us get in front of new eyes. And, of course, if you haven't subscribed, the price is not getting any lower. So you may as well subscribe <laughs> right now and uh, help us out that way as well. And with that, we'd like to thank you for watching. Tune in next week and find out what's happening in the Tesla life. Stay positive, test negative. Thank you, Lee Moon.